All right, thank you so much for being part of this conversation this particular ma uh, uh, for, uh, Thursday morning. As always, it is a pleasure being with you. At all, if at all you're just joining us, you're just in time for the next conversation of the day. My name is Ram Aguk, and this is why in the morning, Thursday vibes it is. And we appreciate your uh, presence. We appreciate you from wherever you're watching us from. Keep engaging with us on Facebook and on our website where we are live at www.kbc.co.ke forward slash why. So on Facebook, we've posted a question there on our Facebook page, and we've asked, "What do you do to maintain or to ha to, to, to to maintain your mental health?" So many uh, people have sent in their feedback in regards to that. I shall sample a few of your comments as we continue with this conversation. But remember, the hashtag is Why in the Morning at Ram Maguko and at Y254 Channel. Participate with us. It's all about suicide prevention and mental health on this particular uh, Thursday morning. Remember tomorrow, because you may, want, you may wonder why are we talking about suicide, tomorrow is Suicide Prevention Day and to help us in this conversation to understand more about this because awareness isn't quite um, uh, uh, common in regards to this particular area. You know, when was the last time you had someone talk about suicide prevention and awareness? When? Well, to help us in this conversation, I'm joined by none other than Sakina Taki. She is a very interesting uh, individual, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad we have so, so much in common. But uh, <laughs> she is a mental health uh, a first aider. She is also an author. Can we Sakina? Thank you. It's Thank such a pleasure being here. Thanks for finding time. How are you doing? Very well. You're well. It's been a pleasant morning. Yeah. Um, I, I want us to uh, touch on this. Uh, but even as you continue with me, I have a copy of her book. You should grab a, a, a copy of this book, My Little Yellow Book. That's the title of the book, My Little Yellow Book. It is little. <laughs> it is yellow. <laughs> but it lives it has, up to the name. <laughs> it has a lot. <laughs> yes, um, it has a lot. But, but before we, we touch on this, I want you to tell us about your story. Because you do have a story. Yes. And I was checking you out on social media and on, on, on the website that you have. And it's quite interesting, the content that I found there. So tell us a bit about your story, how it all started. Because I'm aware, for those who don't know, that she once contemplated suicide. Yes, I did. Yes. I did attempt suicide mm -hmm. uh, once upon a time. So mm -hmm. this came about in uh, about 2016. Uh -huh. um, I was in my mid-20s, very hyped up. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of people go through this. I fell in love. and uh, Love. Uh, yes. All, always. <laughs> <laughs> it's a root cause. <laughs> uh. no, and I fell in love and I got into a very toxic relationship. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. And I married this individual. Um, and that's where all the issues started coming about. Um, after and marriage. Yes, after marriage. Okay. Um, unfortunately, what happened is due to everything that was taking place in the marriage, I mm. did uh, seek separation. And I was very glad that I did because it was a very emotionally abusive uh, relationship. relationship. Mm -hmm. And I'm very lucky I did not let it get physical. Okay. Yeah, and How this did, did not come from, uh, from the man himself, mm. but, 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 you know, from, from family around. And um, there was a day, I think the, the, the day I, I decided that I need to take a step was the mm. day I was held very violently by my arm. Mm. And that's when the emotional abuse, I'm like, if I'm not going to stop, then I will be a victim. And what most people do not quite get is it all starts from somewhere. Yes. Abuse. Yes. And at the end of the day, there is the foundation that starts emotionally. Yes, very before, true. Before it gets physical. Exactly. And that's that's when you have to realize what the next step could be. Because mm -hmm. what I always say is, you are a victim the first time, but mm -hmm. after that, you're just a volunteer. But it's very hard to get out of that space. For most people, you know the African setup. They yes. tell you that uh, you know marriage is, is, is never easy. It's not a bed of roses. Exactly. And there is no perfect man. Yes. That's what they say. Yes. And whoever you find yourself with, stick with them. What did you and say in regards to that? You know, it's very interesting you posed that question today because just today I'm going to have an IG live on relationships. <laughs> and that's what we're going to discuss. Uh, what do you look for in a man before you, you, you know, you want to settle down with him? Mm -hmm. What age is the right age to settle down with a man? Because um, what I could take emotionally is not the same thing what another woman would be able to take. So we are all different and so, we all have a different amount of resilience. So for your case, it was more of an emotional cycle. 
of yes. sadness and worry. You know where where you where you're looked upon as being worthless. You're told that um, you're you're you can't do anything. You can't do anything right. And for me, it was such a shocker because I've always been such a confident person. Mm -hmm. I've always uh, been good at whatever I do in terms of work or it, uh, you know at at home. And all of a sudden, you're made to feel like you're, you're nothing. nothing. Even if you want to go to the bathroom, you have to ask for permission. And when I ponder upon it. it it got to that level. And when I ponder upon that right <laughs> that now, I laugh. <laughs> yeah, I laugh. But at that time, it was very serious for me. You couldn't go to the bathroom until you asked for permission. And so I got out, thank God, of that setting. And um, I thought if I take a step back, we mm -hmm. would be able to work it out. But mm -hmm. it wasn't going as planned. You know, you plan, I plan, but you know, he's the best planner. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. the time, there was one night uh, where I told myself, you know what? The best way to end all this pain and misery and shame, because there's a lot of shame that comes upon when, when yeah. you're in a broken relationship, mm -hmm. especially to the, towards the woman, is to end yourself. But one thing I'd like to tell our viewers, Ram, is that nobody gets up and decides today I'm going to uh, complete suicide. Yeah. It's something that you will think about. You will look at this world without you in it. Is it like a process? It is, 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 is a it something process. that you think of every now and again until one day you just snap and do it? You know, sometimes you'll be driving uh, in your car and you're like, today if I jump this traffic light and a car hits me, will it be that bad? And I'm telling you, around Nairobi, people are thinking like that. You go into a family gathering or your friend's circle and you're quiet and you're like, without me in this circle, mm. will it still be the same? If yes, then why am I here? Why am I alive? And then you begin and to those question, are the thoughts. You begin to question your purpose in life. Exactly. And your value, whether you're yeah. valued or loved. Yes. <laughs> and then you'll, you'll be surprised. Yeah. I also used to Google um, best ways to complete suicide. And the, the, the reason I use the word complete again, I'd like to emphasize, is because the word commit. You know, we read commit suicide. Mm -hmm. Commit is a very negative word. Okay. You commit a crime. You commit murder. You don't commit suicide. Suicide is not a crime. It's a task. So you complete it. Complete. When it comes to mental health, you have to be very sensitive. If I had a family member who completed suicide and you keep telling me, you know, he committed, he committed, mm. in my head, I, I start uh, okay. taking it as a crime. As so a we, crime, we use right? the term complete suicide, not commit. Um, now, for, for your case, it wasn't always as good as... Uh, uh, it, it, okay, did you expect things to turn out that way in Obviously marriage? Obviously not. Of, because of, at the beginning, you know, it... For every lady, you know, lo those, lo those conversations yes. are interesting. Going out, uh, the things are so nice. It's yes. all good. Yeah. But there is a point that a crack came, Appears. appeared yes. on yes. the wall. You know, um, um, they say that uh, marriage is like a fruit. Mm. Uh, you eat it and regret it and you don't eat it and you still regret it. Mm -hmm, <laughs> that's, mm -hmm, that, mm -hmm. that's, that's what they say. But the thing is... When you're married, it's, a, it's something very new. Because when you're dating, you will go to your house back, I will go back to my house. Because culturally, in a lot of African cultures and in the Asian culture, you can't live with your boyfriend. You can't have a live-in relationship. Yes. Which is honestly, truth be yeah, told, true. very yeah. important. Mm. Yeah. Right? Um, so yeah, I did not plan for things to pan out the way they did. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, when you're in your mid-20s, you're very excited to get into such a relationship. Everyone you're very is. naive. Uh, is. You know, it's right, all about right, love. Right, there's someone who's <laughs> planning for the, for the wedding. You know, they're thinking of how, how, how nice it will be, yes. how many cars they'll have, how many people will attend, the size of the cake, the color of the, 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 the pattern, the design of the wedding dress. And no one actually thinks about what happens after. You know, the problem in our society is we focus on the wedding and not the marriage. Exactly. That's the problem. So uh, I emphasize and I'm actually looking to put together a program for mm. couples mm -hmm. whereby you have at least 10 sessions, okay. whereby you take the first five sessions before you get married. Sometimes you as um, people who are getting married have not discussed so many issues financially, mm -hmm. emotionally. You're just being pushed around by probably your family members or your friends to do things in a certain manner or a certain way. Yeah. Are you ready? So those I are the things we will focus. And the next five sessions come mm -hmm. after your honeymoon period. Mm -hmm. So at least here you're focusing on the marriage and not just the wedding because the wedding is not important. Now, back to suicide issues. Um, is it possible for somebody to detect... Is it possible for someone to be able to notice that I think this person is suicidal? 
yes. or is thinking about it. Yeah. And for your case, did anyone even notice it? So in my case, I did have uh, my best friend who was always there with me. Her name is Christina. And mm -hmm. I, I, I would say she was my, my lifeline at that time wow, and my wow. sister who was here as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, although they did not know I would, I'm suicidal because you have to realize people who, who even think of committing suicide are not just people who are quiet and lonely. These are mm -hmm. people who are hyper, who are out there, and okay. they always thought, no, she's strong enough. Not, so they not, did not, not know. Not just the introverts. Yes, even yeah, the, yes, the extroverts. Even the extroverts. Um, so they did not notice, but I will give people tips on how to know if your family, friends, colleagues are suffering suicidal thoughts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One, mm -hmm. they will start talking about death you automatically know here there's something. <laughs> there's something we have to look out for. Wow. All right? Yeah, As I yeah. said, suicide is always a planned attempt. Mm -hmm. So you'll see they are either asking about some certain medication or some certain weapons, whether it be a blade or some certain like strength of ropes. It, trust me, people really think about this because you have to know death is not something you want to go towards. You want to finish your pain, not yourself. Because at the end of the day, you're, you're not actually interested in harming yourself. You, yes. It's not like you have a problem with yourself. You have a, you have a problem with your situation. With the issue, exactly. With your issue. Yes. And then what you'll find is, so it, if you've noticed a person is, is you know, just withdrawn for, the, for, the, for two weeks mm. or they're sad. And then one fine day you just see them, they're so chirpy, they're happy. Uh. You just know this one. Because, you know, it's, since it's planned... In their head, they're thinking, let this be the happiest day of my life and then I leave. Mm -hmm. So all, when you see a change of mood all of a sudden, like question. that, you mm -hmm. just know hey, this is a very, very big question mark. Yeah, yeah, and then one yeah. thing I want to tell people, we always assume that if we think somebody has an issue, we will never ask them, have you ever asked anyone a question, are you having suicidal thoughts? We always refrain. Actually, that question sounds... <laughs> <laughs> it sounds... Uh, off in a way. Yes. But Is it okay to ask such yes, a Yes, it's completely okay. We always feel, and I did too before I did my mental health first aid in course, how do you ask somebody that question? We think maybe if I ask him, he will go and commit. Or he, sorry, he will go and complete. Mm. But that's not the case. They want you to know that they are hurting. So please, if you see somebody with these symptoms, ask them, have, have you ever had suicidal thoughts? Uh, is there any self-harm that you do to yourself? And trust me, they will open up to you. It's okay to ask such questions mm -hmm. to people. Mm -hmm. It is actually pulling them back from that bridge that they want to jump what over. Or, or, what about these tendencies of you know, pu um, putting themselves in closed doors? People who, do, who um, they used to be very um, proactive, very social, all of a sudden, Yes, they are them, withdrawn. They are not available, they are withdrawn. Yeah. Is that also a sign? Yes, that is a very big sign. Mm -hmm. The change of mood or change of uh, doing something that they, that they do uh, constantly. And this is one of the, the things that I have realized. If, mm. I, if I will go to a certain setting, maybe um, to play sports or to the mosque or anyway, and I see that there's this person who comes every single day, then for the next two, three days, they are not there. Mm. Uh, I immediately send a message. How are you doing? Is everything okay? Reach out reach out and that is a problem we have as a society yes we don't reach out yes we are focused on our own issues that we forget on other people's issues yes and it's a very cultural thing especially when it, it comes to a place like kenya it's a very fast moving fast paced uh you know city that we live in as well nobody has time for the other person but we have to make time mm. you're just a good town here just walking yeah. down here. Yeah, yeah. Busy walking. actually, if you're walking slowly, <laughs> you're going to be pushed out. You'll be, you'll, you'll be pushed out yeah, of the be way. Pushed out. Yeah. Um, there is a Kenyan youth and a parent who could be watching you right here. Yes. And they're wondering, how do I handle my child, my son or my daughter? Because we've seen statistics. Actually, it was this year that we had a child at the age of, if I'm not wrong, nine years who committed suicide. Yes. And it's, it's, it, it baffled me yeah. that a child would think about it. There is a child who could be committed suicide because of failing in their case. And, yeah. and I say failing in quotes because it is, um, it, it is objective, uh, it's subjective. Yeah. But someone who is that young committing suicide. You know, you have to know in this day and age, kids yeah. are so well equipped with information. And information and knowledge is two different things. 
Today, mm. if, um, if as a child I would be given a task and all I could do is Google it, today if I type how to commit suicide, one-on-one ways or whatever, find it. exactly, and what child does not have access to such mediums? So it is a very, very uh, sensitive topic mm. uh, or issue. And mm. as parents, as friends, sometimes you don't know where to start. So this is, this is the very beginning, the mental health first aider. Mm -hmm. um, as a first aider, I do not provide counseling. Just the way a physical first aider will wrap you up mm -hmm. until you can reach the hospital and get a good, uh, you know, um, reach proper medical facility, I mm -hmm. do the same. Mm -hmm. I will mm -hmm. sit, I will approach the person, I mm -hmm. will listen to them, I will give them uh, information about the, what they are going through then I will encourage them. I encourage them to see a professional therapist. Mm -hmm. I encourage them to have a strong support circle. Mm -hmm. And also as they are going through uh, counseling, mm. I hold their hand and teach them how self-care methods. Okay. So and this is the starting point. If you don't know where to, where to go and who to see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and you've been talking with, with, with many people who yes. um, have shared with you uh, their cases. Yes. How, how was it interacting with all these stories and getting to know how diverse things can, people can be? You know, <laughs> they, they, they normally say, be careful what, what you wish for, because you just might <laughs> get, get it. Because <laughs> now the problems are so many that uh, you feel like, wow, I'm feeling overwhelmed. One of the most interesting circles I had, so I have um, these uh, mental health circles, I have healing circles. Mental mm. health circles is where I call a bunch of 10 people from mm. different walks of life mm -hmm. every, every uh, two weeks mm -hmm. and we discuss mental health issues. The most interesting has been men and mental health. Men. Men and mental health. And I, and I would have expected women. Yeah. <laughs> and this <laughs> is the issue. Because it's men you know, who what are I, suffering, who's suffering more than actually, the other. Actually, yes, if you see, um, statistics state that mm. men are three times more likely to have completed suicide compared to women although women attempted more mm. but men mm. completed there's a higher percent three times more of mm. a man completing suicide mm -hmm. um, this is because as a man you will never let out your emotions yeah it's the same thing uh, so in the men's circle one of the things uh, that came up was as a child the first thing we're told is don't cry like a girl why do we say that to our children? And, and all of these things circle around this perspective of what it means to be a man. Exactly. What it means that real men are like But who this. set that rule of being a real man? <laughs> who said a real man has to, um, you know, be so strong that they can't even express their emotion? That is not what a real man is supposed to be like. Just be a real human being because we all have emotions, we all mm -hmm. go through situations, and if you're not going to talk about it or let it out, it's going to affect your family and your kids. And by the way, a lot of mental health issues are brought down genetically. So if you are somebody who thinks you do not want to uh, seek assistance, mm -hmm. just know that you're putting your future generation in jeopardy. Wow. Yeah. So you've dealt with most cases for, for, for most of these cases, men in, your, in, in the weekly sessions. Yes, so I had you, a weekly you, you, you session of that men. Too. Uh, so I normally have, so I had the first one in, in August, mm -hmm. and we've decided that, because they're like, this is the first time somebody has reached out to us mm -hmm. to ask us, what is your take? What do you feel? So please keep the space open. Okay, okay. Uh, one of the very interesting questions I asked them was, um, mm -hmm. you see, as a woman, I always believe that, ah, these, my issues are always caused by, by a man. So I asked them, what do you do when you suffer, you know, emotional stress? And some of the things they highlighted were um, drug abuse, mm -hmm. um, going around with women, getting violent. So we're like some of the problems that are caused in our society sometimes are caused as a reaction of ourselves. Mm -hmm. When have I ever sat down with a man who I am close to as a friend, probably as my husband, and asked, what is your issue? Why are you feeling like that? And that's what I encourage people to do now. And uh, so you, you've managed to do all of this. And it's quite interesting because you're, you're strong. <laughs> you're strong. Picking yourself up. Yes. You said you, you, you went through that process of separation to the point of now writing a book. Yes. You know, how, how did it come to this level? And right. uh, most importantly, you know, you rebranding yourself 
and repackaging yourself. I'm sure that there was a lot of uh, you know uh, uh, changes that you had to undergo, some right. metamorphosis. Yes. So I would say one thing. I think I've been very lucky because I was brought up by a group of strong women. Wow. Yes. My, mm -hmm. my dad passed away when I was five years old. And mm -hmm. then my mom and my grandma and my sisters, they brought me up. Strong so I women. always saw women at the <laughs> forefront of everything. If there was a bulb that was to be fixed in the, in the house, it's it was over. mom who would do it. Your mom would fix the bulb. Yes, my mom would fix the bulb. And that's wow. when I realized, ah, women can do anything. And that's what I was always told. There's nothing you cannot do. Mm -hmm. So that was one thing that, that taught me that, no, it's, it's not necessary that I have to have a man in my life. I can, I can just stand for on my own. And the second thing is I emphasize on a formal education. You know, the reason I was able to seek a better lifestyle is because of the formal education I have. Sometimes even to get through to a door, you mm -hmm. need a certain type of a certification. Yeah. So I agree, especially when it comes to developing countries, we're still very heavily based on formal education. Mm -hmm. So thanks to that, I actually got a contract in Zanzibar mm -hmm. and I didn't think much. I was in such a terrible situation. More than anything, I felt embarrassed because as a woman, you're like, oh, you couldn't even keep a marriage. You see that that's mm -hmm. how society mm -hmm. yeah, perceives yeah, yeah, you yeah, yeah. more than anything. That's how you perceive yourself. So I packed my bags. I went to Zanzibar. I had no, I didn't know anyone there. I did not have a place to stay and I crashed in my office space for three to four nights. Wow. Yes, and that's how it started. Going there with, with a backpack, going to look for a mattress and a fagio so you can clean mm -hmm. your office. And I slept there for three to four nights. Then I started seeking accommodation and that journey was, it just grew. Look at you now. Exactly. <laughs> and Zanzibar has been a very big part of my healing. Wow. Yes. So it was, it was like some vacation in a way, okay, in a way. It is, it, is, it is just some time for you to uh, leave the environment that you are uh, 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 surrounded by, you know, that, that, that which affected you. Honestly, for me, at that time, I couldn't even think why I was going there. Uh, yes, I was going there f on, on a contracted job. But what, what exactly did I expect after that? Because I was going not to come back. Mm -hmm. So I just took it a day at a time. Now, how is it right now? Because, um, I don't know, maybe you can tell us your story. Um, do, you, do, do you meet with, uh, 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 you know, uh, after separation, do you have these conversations again? Um, how do you relate or did you cut off? Uh, because there is someone who's watching you r r outside here and they're wondering, what do I do? Because they're in a toxic relationship and yes. it's affecting them mentally. Yes. Do they cut off? Do they separate? Do they completely just disappear? Um. I would first suggest include the people close by to you. Sometimes mm -hmm. we feel like it's embarrassing or we don't want to bother our parents or our siblings or you know our relatives, but this is the right time because you need that support mm -hmm. and you have to realize as family that's what they are there there for to help you out. Yeah. So, so seek that advice don't and guidance. Don't think that you're bothering them. Yeah, no, you're not. That's the whole point of having a family and a community. So seek that support. Don't get don't get pinned down by saying, it's okay, it's a marriage, it will work out. No, mm -hmm. know your own values. Where do you see yourself five years from now? If you're going to have a child in such a relationship, would you like your child to see you in this position? Mm -hmm. Take, ask yourself these very uh, important questions. Mm -hmm. Have your support system. Mm -hmm. Seek advice from a counselor. There is so much stigma attached to it. Today, if you start coughing, are you going to sit at home? <laughs> no, <laughs> you're going to rush to the hospital because you know it might be COVID. Yeah, it might be COVID. Right? That's why yeah, there was a time I, I almost sneezed there. Yeah. I don't know if, and I was like, <laughs> I, yeah. I, I held it in because you know of the environment. So, did you cut off communication? Um, with with my family, extended family members, yes. I did. Mm -hmm. But the people who knew I was suffering, my best friend, my sisters, mm -hmm. they were mm -hmm. there throughout. Wow. So one of my support system was uh, my, my niece. So my sister who lives in Canada just gave birth the day I flew to Zanzibar. Mm -hmm. And every single day after that, we would like we would communicate. She would talk to me, not, not about my situation. But you see, that's the support system that you need. Wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. And, and one interesting thing is, even though you may not know it, you also have a support system. Everyone. Everybody has what a support you from, system. You have a support system. Yes. Let's talk about this book. My little, little, my little yellow book. Yes. I, I've, I've gone through it. It's, it's, it's quite an interesting uh, piece of work. What is it all about? So 
My little yellow book is my battle with depression mm -hmm. and most importantly my process of healing. Because I believe I don't want to talk so much about depression that we overlook how to how, how to be able to build your resilience. Yes. Right? So yeah. this is what the book is about. Mm -hmm. So as you read my journey, it's also a journal where you will be able to project your own journey. And the first mm -hmm. point of realization that something is happening is when you let it out. You yeah. either write it down. Ram, you write as well. You know that's a way of expressing yourself. And then yeah. you'll realize, yesterday I wrote about this. Today I'm writing about this. This is a chain. Mm -hmm. So there is a problem. Mm -hmm. So start journaling. Journaling is one of the ways you're going to start healing. Mm -hmm. There's a frame of gratitude there where, yeah. I, where I tell you that no matter what happens, there will be always somebody there for you. You're just not realizing it. It could be your mom. Who, uh, when was the last time you called your mom and said, thank you so much for doing what you did? Never. Yeah. You know, I, I, I love what you said because there's always a symbol of hope. Exactly. In everyone's life. Yes. So uh, giving gratitude will make you realize that, no, this person is always there for me. So when you're feeling down, when you're mm. in your winter, because mm -hmm. the book is divided into seasons, not chapters. I'm seeing um, autumn, winter, yes, summer, spring. Exactly. And it just tells you that. However harsh your winter is, mm -hmm. your summer will be that sunny too. You will come back to your winter. It's not like winter is going to go away, mm -hmm. but you will just be stronger. I love what you're saying. <laughs> and, and, and let me read just a section here, and I really said I would. Yeah. And <laughs> I have to. Um, there's, uh, th there's a part here, actually, what you're saying, because it's a cycle. cycle. Yes. There is a part on this particular uh, page, and I, I want to read just but that piece. And... Uh, she says, life is, you know, it's, it's, it's a poem. Yes. That's one, one interesting thing. I love it. Yes, and it's I, a poetry and, and, and I love poetry. Poetic journal. <laughs> you're, you're a great writer. Life, and I will be the, 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 the orator. <laughs> let me see. Let me, you, you can gauge me out of ten. Yeah. <laughs> life in full circle never rests at one season. Always looking forward to adapt, grow. To be happy showers reasons. With every shivering sorrow and every overcoming worry, in every growing intention and every blooming moment, life is a full circle, never a constant line. Yes, isn't that true? It's a season. Exactly. Even how you feel, every day is different. Today Winter you're happy, won't tomorrow last you're sad. Long. No. It will come back. And that's what I try to tell people who all uh, I try and assist. Don't feel like if today you're depressed, it will go away and it's going to go away for good. You have to build your resilience. So when it comes back, it's not going to come back as harsh and mm -hmm. you know what to do. Some people, sometimes people ask themselves this question, why me? Yes. But if not you, then who else? <laughs> <laughs> it you know, the thing. Also know uh -huh. that uh, people who try and strive uh, very high mm. are also people who are affected. So if you are being affected by it, that means there's something very good that's going to come out of it. Mm -hmm. Now there is there is some some interesting data that I I, I got here because according to statistics globally, yes, seven hundred and three and three thousand people get that number. Seven hundred and three thousand people take their own life every year. Actually, in 2020, this is the year when the pandemic hit. Over 800,000 people completed suicide globally. In Kenya, people who completed or attempted, the mm. uh, stats show it's about 1,408 in 2020 alone. <laughs> Data from the World Bank also put suicide mon uh, mortality rates in Kenya at 6.1 people in every 100,000. Yeah. With men being the highest in the category. Yes. So basically in 2020, Every 40 seconds, one person committed suicide. Completed suicide. Tell us about tomorrow. Suicide Prevention Day. Yes. What should, what should we be looking out for? So all, for one, try and spread happiness. Mm -hmm. If you know uh, it's a Friday, you'll be at work. If your colleague is going through something, people are losing their family members and friends every single day. Just try and send a message of love mm -hmm. to somebody a message of peace mm -hmm. and try and be there for them. Look out for that person who's been so quiet. Mm -hmm. We've talked about how to, um, how to go through the symptoms of, of uh, you know, mm -hmm. identifying somebody who, who is trying to complete suicide or attempt. Mm -hmm. So look at that and try to assist them. And yeah. if you don't know where to start, mm -hmm. 
kindly contact me. I'm a mental health first aider. We mm -hmm. will take it from there. How can people get you? <laughs> so you can find me on Instagram, mm -hmm. Sakina underscore Taki. Mm -hmm. I'm also on Facebook, Sakina Taki. Uh, you could leave me a message on WhatsApp mm -hmm. on plus two five four mm -hmm. seven zero six four three six three four seven. Let us start a journey. Say that number again. Plus two five four mm -hmm. seven zero six four three six three four seven. Wow. Mm -hmm. yes. So tomorrow is, uh, is 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 suicide prevention day. Let's spread the love. Yes. Let's ensure that you know we 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 look out for one another. Yes. You know there and and it is it's interesting because you've given some of the self self help tips. Exactly. As we wrap this conversation up and bring it to a close, what would be your your, your last word to that person who is watching you from home, that parent, that young lady or young man who is watching you and is really really going through a moment in life. I would like to tell them that Number one, it's okay not to be okay. <laughs> You're not the only one suffering, whether it's thoughts of depression, whether it's self-harm. Mm. There are so many people who are suffering the same thing. There is help out there. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow can be way better. Just take the first step. And one interesting thing is she already took the first step. I did. So she's not, she's <laughs> not preaching water and drinking wine. <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. Yes. Sakina, thank you so much for, for, for coming. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank it's you for having me. It's a pleasure being with you. And uh, keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. Hope to have this conversation even more as we create awareness on, on, on such cases of uh, suicide and mental health. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ram. All right. That brings us to the end of this conversation. And uh, yes, I said that I'll sample of a few of your feedback, but because of the interest of time, I just want to say thank you for uh, you know your comments on our Facebook page. I've seen so many comments there. Keep tweeting. Keep texting. The hashtag is why in the morning at Ramaguk and at Y254 channel. What do you do to maintain your mental health? Some are talking about swimming. Some are talking about reading. Some are talking about music and singing. You do you. But at the end of the day, maintain that smile. May God bless you. And may God bless the work of your hands. That brings us to the end of this conversation today. Thank you for being part of this show. See you again later on. Remember, we still have a lot in store for you right here on Why in the Morning. For now, it's goodbye and thank you so much. My name is Ram Maguko. Keep it Why in the Morning.